It is Wow Wednesday special, where we will be popping in once or twice on a random Wednesday during the month for a special recipe. So if you're ready, let's get to cooking. Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Kayla D. I'm Kayla, and that's my husband, Randy. Today we're going to be making copycat McDonald's chicken and nuggets. For your ingredients for the chicken mixture, you'll need three boneless chicken fillets diced, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of pepper, a tablespoon of onion powder, a tablespoon of garlic powder, one fourth teaspoon of celery salt, one teaspoon of baking powder, two tablespoons of cornstarch, and two tablespoons of olive oil. First you want to get your boneless skinless chicken breast out. You can use chicken thighs for this, but to do the copycat version of McDonald's, they use breast only now, and they have for, I think, like 12 to 14 years. So go ahead and get your chicken breast out. You'll want to rinse that off well and, and paper towel dry that. And then I cut mine into half inch to one inch cubes, and I use my cutlery scissors. You can use a knife, whatever. It's just easy and convenient for you. The squares do not have to be perfect because we are going to be blending this up and chopping it. So once you have all of your cubes chopped, we'll go ahead and get your food processor out or chopper. I'm choosing to use a, a smaller chopper because I'm just making enough um, for me and my husband. I am going to freeze half of this recipe. It is a full recipe for a family of four. So now you will have your chopper or your food processor out. I just used my little Cuisinart I got at Costco. I'll leave a link in the description box. It's also an immersion blender set. It's really cool. And no, I'm not sponsored by it, but I will leave the link because I love it. So I just put chicken cubes in until right before I get to my little gray rim there in the center. And I pop my Cuisinart on and then I go ahead and pop in the motor for my immersor blender there. You can see right on top and then I start pulsing it. You don't want it to be super fine, but you do want it chopped up. I chopped mine for about 10 seconds. I stopped I turned it up and then I chopped it for about another 10 to 12 seconds and then as you can see it's kind of like a ground chicken consistency there so then from here we're going to go ahead and add our ingredients I did put my chicken into the bowl as you can see so now I'm going to put my onion powder and my garlic powder and my salt and pepper and all that in there and then I'm also going to add my baking powder as well and my celery salt as you can see here and I just do a quarter teaspoon of the celery salt because you already have salt in it so you don't want to have it over salty the baking powder Besides working as a binder, it's also going to cause that McChicken nugget to be real fluffy in the inside. It will actually fluff up as it's frying. So that's how you get that pillowy consistency in the chicken nugget from the McDonald's version. And you do want the cornstarch in there. It will help bind it together. That way you're not using any type of egg or anything because McDonald's doesn't use an egg. So why would you, you know? You can opt to use the natural chicken fat. However, um, after learning a lot about the chickens, that's where a lot of the like diseases and bacteria grow is in the fat of the chicken. That's why I chose to use olive oil. You can use whatever oil you choose to add to it, but you do want some type of fat put in there. I advise a healthy fat, but of course, whatever is comfortable for you and your family. And again, be careful with your salt, how much salt you're adding. Um, honestly, because I do put salt into the batter as well. One teaspoon of salt was plenty for this recipe. And like I said, it ended up making enough for four people, probably up to six people. Because generally, you know, you get like an eight piece count and generally you can't finish it. Men, yes, they normally can finish that and more, but you know, so... 
I'll end up giving you a total count on the chicken nuggets at the end um, of the recipe. But I froze it and I keep them unbattered frozen in a bag. And then when I'm ready to use them, I'll just whip up some fresh batter. That way it actually fries better. And I just cook as many as what we're going to eat. They're very convenient to do, like make this in a big amount and then freeze them. And once you have them frozen, you're going to pull each nugget out and then put them and store them in type of a vacuum seal bag, a Tupperware container or something like that. Because it is easy to pull out and whip up a quick batter. It generally only takes about one minute to whip up the batter. So then you can go right into frying and you'll have fresh chicken nuggets. You could also probably fry them and then refreeze them and store them and just reheat them up in the oven or air fryer too. I have never tried it, but you know, if you're daring and you want to try it, go for it. After you have all your seasonings in there, the baking powder and the cornstarch, you'll want to mix that chicken up really good to where it's like a sticky pasty consistency. As you can see here in the video, it is like a very mushy sticky pasty consistency and that's honestly what you want I do advise wearing gloves when working with chicken however you know it is up to you you're in your kitchen but for my safety measures I use gloves I actually will change my gloves two or three times and put new ones on when I'm working with chicken just because I'm like OCD like that but you know everyone does their own thing I'm not saying it's good or bad not to. I'm just saying for my own reasons, I do it. So then you'll start forming your chicken nuggets. You want to get parchment paper out for this. Cling wrap will work, but parchment paper is always better. And you can get it at the Dollar Tree if you don't want to spend a lot of money on it. And I'll go ahead and leave a link to that also in the description box for the Dollar Tree one. As well as the one that I get from Costco. So here, and yes, I do keep both on hand because I use both for different reasons. So here, the chicken nuggets, I put them in all different types of shapes because if you go to McDonald's, you'll notice that they're always in a different type of a shape. Some are more like a rectangle style and some are more rounded and they're a little awkward and some look like they're like little characters if you drew a face on it it would go hopping along like you see on tv but so anyways i did mine in all different types of shapes and then some of them ended up being humongous it was so funny this is the first time i ever made them and it was just really fun to get in there and do that so after you have all of your chicken nuggets placed and you want to keep a little gap in between them so they're not sticking together then you're going to go ahead and prep them for the freezer. I ended up with two full trays of chicken nuggets. And I'll actually go through my pictures and count those. So then I can let you know how many chicken nuggets that I actually made. I put parchment paper over the top of one tray. And then used my cooling rack on top of that. And then I put the other tray on top. And then put a little bit more parchment paper on top of that. That way they didn't stick to each other and I could put them inside the freezer and they didn't crumble over each other. If you want to also put cling wrap over the top of this or foil, you're more than welcome to. I didn't just because it is only me and my husband in the house and he doesn't get into the freezer. So that's why I just left it that way. And this does make a 40 count of chicken nuggets. After your trays are stacked, you'll want to get that into the freezer for one to two hours. And now for your batter ingredients, you'll need one cup of flour, one half cup of cornstarch, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, one egg, one and a quarter cup of club soda, and one half cup of ice cubes. Also, you'll want a pot or a deep fryer with some cooking oil of your choice in it. I have not tried to air fry these and nor would I try because the batter is wet. So you get your cooking oil onto your stove top. I just used my large spaghetti pan. Just use whatever is comfortable for you. You'll want to have your cooking oil at the proper temperature for deep frying. For me on the stove top it is on high because I have an electric stove. So now I'm going to take my medium mixing bowl and I'm going to start building my batter. It is very simple and easy. You just start putting all of your dry ingredients in there. Once you have your dry ingredients in there, you start adding your wet ingredients, crack your egg in, do your club soda, 
and start mixing. Once you have your batter mixed, then you'll want to go ahead and add in the ice. You'll want to make sure that you mix this really well though first. Make sure there's no clumps in there and that everything is blended pretty well and about the same consistency before adding the ice in it. That is the final thing to add in and then you're going to start frying right away. So after you get your ice in, you'll want to mix it again just a little bit because you want that batter to be super cold. Super, super, super cold. And don't think that this is under seasoned. Trust me, these are going to be delicious. And just to try it out, we used a um, barbecue sauce that we had had from the store, but we also got some of the McDonald's barbecue sauces just to taste it. And with the McDonald's barbecue sauce, it actually tastes just like the chicken nuggets from McDonald's. But when eating it with another sauce, then it actually took, tasted like a chicken nugget, but with a different sauce. So if you're very fond of those sauces, you'll want to go pick those up or try to find a copycat recipe for the sauce that you like from McDonald's. When our oil is ready, so you'll go ahead and drop your nuggets in. After you drop your first two nuggets in, you'll want to turn your pan like you just saw me do. That's going to lift the nugget from the bottom where it's not sticking yet you're not going to mess up the coating on your chicken nuggets i learned that little tip from gordon ramsay he does that when he's cooking even pasta if you just turn your pan back and forth three or four times it actually keeps things from sticking to the bottom and you're not having to actually touch your food and mess it up at all so it was a really good tip from him so you continue to dunk those frozen chicken patties into your batter and then putting it into your pot i'm sure you could probably even try to like mess around with this recipe and make it into like a mcchicken size um patty for a sandwich and using the same batter um, maybe add a little bit of pepper into the batter because I know the McChicken sandwiches do come with pepper in the batter. So I would suggest maybe adding some pepper, but to make a couple chicken sandwiches, I mean, you could also try that as well. But isn't that look delicious? Oh, oh my God, these chicken nuggets were so good. I just cooked them for about two and a half to three minutes. Then I would stir them with my cooking spoon and cook them for another two and a half to three minutes. And I kept just doing that. And then after two times of stirring them like that in intervals, then I went ahead and did like 30 second intervals until they started to get that golden brown. Once they got golden brown, I went ahead and removed them. I did not want them to get too dark because of course you don't want really dark nuggets. But you see that color? That's the color you're looking for for your chicken nuggets. Isn't that beautiful? The crisp and crunch on those two. I just went ahead and just used some paper towels on a plate to go ahead and drain my nuggets. And it worked out really well. They stayed nice and crispy. They didn't get soggy. And then I just continued to make more. And you're going to get a few drops of batter that are going to start bubbling up and collecting. That's actually really easy to use. If you have a smaller cooking spoon with little holes in it or a strainer, you can actually strain those out as you're going. But this is what our chicken nuggets look like when they were done. Here's the center. I wanted to show you how fluffy they are. That's why it's key to put that baking soda into the chicken mixture. It's absolutely delicious. We just went ahead and made some of those Orita fast food fries. I'll leave a link for them in the description box just so they were like McDonald's fries without having to replicate that recipe as well. Thank you for joining us here on Cooking with Kayla D. We had a big storm this week, but it has cleared up and it is nice and beautiful again. Here from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, we bid you adieu. Remember... To like subscribe and share comment let us know who you are and if you like to cook where you're from we would like to get to know you we're trying to build relationships and friends here on this channel god bless you and we'll see you again soon and remember stay in that kitchen and get to cooking set your mind on things above not on things on the earth 
for you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Colossians chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. My disclaimer.